So, happy Halloween. So I figured I'll wear a mask to uh, celebrate the occasion. Uh, but yeah, it's all about the brand. So uh, uh, that's, uh, that's what I'm kind of like here to talk about today. And uh, how we took a little game on the iPhone and uh, yeah, put it on all of your devices and uh, put it in some other places as well. Uh, so uh, if, if, you call, like, if you ask me, and a lot of you actually asked already about uh, marketing and, and uh, all of that, I think it's all about uh, standing out. So you start by doing that. And one good example, uh, I don't know how many other people were wearing masks here uh, today, probably not too many. So that's already like a good start. Uh, another like very simple example, uh, if I look here like in the audience, uh, not too many people here are wearing red. Another like simple thing. So uh, I had a lot of meetings, a lot of discussions today. Why? Because people instantly recognize the red hoodie and they found, find me in the crowd. And I think that if you look at any market, uh, and I think this is especially true kind of like in our business, our business of entertainment, and if you look at then more specifically uh, in the area of games, uh, mobile games. There are hundreds of games, new games every day, every day. Extremely crowded market. So, you know, for every Angry Birds, there are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, not so Angry Birds, not so successful products. So, uh, it's very, very important to do whatever you can do to stand out from the crowd. So, you know, wear the red hoodie, wear the mask, you know, whatever you can come up with. And of course, uh, I'm not uh, telling you all of you to kind of like wear a red hoodie because then it's going to be very difficult for me to stand out from the crowd. So, you know, like, please don't do that. But, you know, come up with your own red hoodie, uh, you know, your own, you know, how you can uh, stand out as a person, how you can stand out as a company. I think it's very, very important. Uh, so that's really kind of like the starting point for uh, building the brand. Uh, then if you look at, uh, you know, uh, before we go more into, into the branding side, uh, maybe a bit of uh, kind of like a recap of, of the Angry Birds story. Uh, so a lot of you probably heard it, uh, but uh, if you look at Rovio, Rovio has been making games since 2003. So a long time. We made 51 games before Angry Birds. So I think this is also a very important point that, uh, you know, a lot of people look at Angry Birds, look at what we're doing, and, you know, it's like a couple of guys, they got lucky overnight success, and yeah, you know, that's how it goes. But he actually, yeah, we spent several years, and we made 51 games before Angry Birds. So Angry Birds was the 52nd game that Robio made. Uh, another thing, if you look at uh, Angry Birds, a bit on like the product creation and uh, all of that, uh, really, really focused on eliminating luck at every, every step of the process. So uh, really looked at what it takes to make a hit game, you know, every little detail. If you look at the icon for Angry Birds in the App Store, we did more than 30 designs for, uh, for that, you know, just to give you one example. So um, we took the uh, icon and then we kind of like looked at what does it look like to have a red bird as number one in the App Store. And it looked very good and it has been looking very good for like more than 300 days. So, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty good. But uh, anyway, these kind of things, really looking at uh, every little thing, how do we build a great, great experience for the fans? How do we surprise? How do we, do we delight the fans? And, and that's something that we still, you know, at, at Rovio and everything we do, that's always the first priority. If it doesn't surprise and delight our fans, we don't do it. I think it's very bad reason to do something kind of like just because we can make a quick buck. So uh, our priorities are, are very, very clear. We always, always start with the experience. 
And I think this is again, you know, like what I said first, that okay, you have to stand out. But of course, it's a given that you, before you do that, you have to have a great product, a great experience. And it's not like rocket science. I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, what you have to do. But uh, it's surprising how many companies, how many businesses, you know, say one thing, do another thing. You know, you make, start making compromises that, yeah, but, you know, okay, let's, you know, like, think about, you know, how we can make a bit more money here, there, and you kind of like start forgetting about the fans, you start forgetting about the experience. So, uh, yeah, with Angry Birds, uh, we actually had uh, a very small team, so we uh, built the game, uh, it took us eight months, 12 people, and then Angry Birds came out uh, uh, 11th of December, which is like Angry Birds Day and hopefully national holiday in most countries going forward. Uh, so we're actually about to celebrate our third Angry Birds Day, 11th of December. But if you look at uh, Angry Birds and, and uh, how it all happened, we put a lot of effort, as I said, getting every single detail in the game right. You know, like when you start the game, what do you want to do? You want to play. So there's one play button. Center of the screen, press that, and you're in the game. And uh, this is actually a very simple test. If you start up a lot of other games, there's all kinds of buttons and options and things that get in between you, know, you and the game. So really, really simple things. You know, get rid of all the stuff that you really don't need. And I think this is something that uh, when you build products, when you build services, it's very, very easy to throw in a whole bunch of stuff you know, just in case that maybe somebody wants to do this and somebody wants to do that. And it's, it's a lot easier to put in stuff than take it out. So whenever I look at, uh, you know, any kind of service, any kind of game, anything, you know, what is the bare minimum that you really need? And, you know, focus on that. And if you look at Angry Birds, you know, there's the play button, you're in the game, great experience. And, and that's what you want to have you know, when you look at like a, a game on, on your, you know, smartphone or tablet, you might have, you know, like five minutes of downtime, then you want to know that, hey, actually, I have time to play, you know, like two levels of Angry Birds. And okay, then you might end up uh, playing a bit longer than the five minutes than you kind of like uh, started out to do. But still, you know, you have, then you want to get into the game very, very fast. But yeah, so uh, we came out with the game in, in, uh, in December 2009. It didn't immediately take off. And okay, if you go back to 2009, okay, we're from Helsinki, Finland, so, uh, you know, uh, used to be this other company that made a lot of mobile phones at the time, and not a lot of iPhones uh, in Finland, so for us to get to number one in Finland, we told friends and family, why don't you download Angry Birds, went to number one. So that was kind of like, it didn't re require like uh, massive like marketing or anything like that. Uh, then, okay, I said that we uh, wanted to eliminate luck, but I think also when you do things, you kind of like tend to create your own luck, and that also happened to us. So uh, we became number one in Finland, and we stayed number one, which uh, again, by design, we built uh, Angry Birds to be a game that uh, it's not a disposable, like throwaway product. We built it to be a service. So uh, that's kind of like why it stayed at number one. But yeah, we stayed at number one in Finland. Then uh, what happened in the spring of, um, of 2010, Olympics in Vancouver, and uh, uh, then uh, Anja Persson, you know, fairly uh, famous, well-known skier in Sweden, uh, she fell, hurt herself, and couldn't participate in the Olympics. And then Swedish media interviewed her, and uh, then she said, yeah, it's like really sucks. There's like, you know, I have to stay at the hotel, but at least there's Angry Birds. So we went to number one in Sweden. So, you know, a bit of luck. Uh, but then uh, that led to uh, another thing. Apple took note, and at that time, the best possible marketing that you can get, you get featured by Apple. So we got featured by Apple in the UK, went to number one, stayed there. And then a bit after that, uh, the same thing happened in the US, went to number one and stayed there. And actually, Angry Birds stayed there for uh, more than 300 days, so that's more than 10 times longer than any of our uh, competitors have ever ever achieved. 
And uh, one reason why we stayed there was that we made it so. So first of all, we provide constant updates to the game. So I think that you really need to do, uh, you know, you need to view these games as services. And you know, like entertainment today is a service. So if you downloaded the game, you know, back in December 2009, you got Angry Birds, great game with 63 levels. If you download the same game today, 400 levels. Because we have constantly updated, brought more levels, more birds, more you know, surprise and delight for the fans. So there's a reason to come back. And again, not like rocket science. It's the same if you run a website. You know, uh, if you never update the website, there's no reason for people to come back. So again, not rocket science, but again, you have to you know, take care of the fans, keep the fans engaged. Very, very important. So uh, that's what we do. And that's why Angry Birds stayed uh, at number one for, for a very long time. And uh, if you then look at uh, you know, the marketing side, and that's kind of like what, what I do, uh, marketing and branding, we set out not just to build a game, but to build an entertainment franchise. So that was kind of like the plan from the beginning, that let's uh, keep making games until we have a hit on the iPhone and then take it to all the other screens, and then take it everywhere else. So we got to number one on the iPhone. We came out with uh, versions for the other platforms, and we made Angry Birds available on all screens. Uh, one, one thing, actually, on, on that, uh, that note. Uh, so uh, at that time, we started talking about our Tetris strategy. So putting Angry Birds on all screens, and then, uh, very early, in 2010, uh, I started uh, talking about our ambition of 100 million downloads. Nobody believed me. I mean, that time we had like a million or two million downloads. Nobody at Rovio and uh, you know, even less outside of the company, nobody believed that, hey, you, know, you can't get to 100 million downloads. Only Tetris has done that. It's impossible. And uh, I, I think that... Uh, Another very important thing in anything is, is that you have to be ambitious. And it's very good to set like really ambitious goals. So the 100 million downloads, again, uh, nobody believed that. But then first 12 months, we hit 50 million downloads. Not too bad. Then Christmas happened. We added another 25 million. And in March 2011, 100 million. So it uh, was possible. And uh, I think that uh, was very good uh, for the team. Because nobody believed this at, in the beginning, but then started to believe, and OK, yes, we'll do 100 million. And now, when we do a new game, a new service, anything, the 100 million target is kind of like a side note that, of course, we'll hit 100 million. So I think that it, it's uh, very good, and I love you know like seeing that that now it's a given. So the ambition level is at totally, totally different level from kind of like where we started, and that applies kind of like to everything we do. Crazy ambitious, and we're never happy. Extremely hungry team. So if you ask anybody at Rovio, and we always get that you know like congratulations, uh, you know, and a lot of you congratulated me today, and it's like it's a good start and people laugh. You know, we passed a billion downloads in May. It's a good start. But we're very serious about that because we have much bigger ambition than that. So uh, again, uh, you have to have that hunger. And hopefully, you know, I'm not telling any, anybody here in this room, you know, like working on startups that uh, you have to be crazy ambitious. But I mean, I really think that, you know, look at what you're doing what is the biggest thing that you can do and then like make that 10 times bigger that's probably a good good target for you guys to have that's what we did and uh, 
Also, uh, if you look at the marketing, surprise and delight. Example from, uh, from this year, so we launched Angry Birds Space, our, our most successful launch uh, to date. And uh, when we do a game about space, where do we launch it? You know, of course, we launch it in space. We launch it together with NASA on the International Space Station, which we did. And so what was the reaction when I said that, OK, we're going to launch the game with NASA on the International Space Station? Crazy. Can't be done. Nobody has done it before. But we did it. So why couldn't you launch a game in space? So I think that uh, this is another thing that uh, I think is very, very important, that uh, you have to do these kind of things. And, and also, you know, if people think you're crazy, you're probably doing the right thing. And it can be done. I mean, why couldn't be? Why, why not? And that's another question that we ask all the time. Why not? Why not do it? And that's uh, another kind of like important lesson, I think, in, in kind of like marketing, building brands, and, and like doing this kind of uh, uh, entertainment franchise. Every day we're told by lots of people what we shouldn't do. So we then started looking at, okay, very successful, you know, with getting the brand out there with the game. And then we wanted to kind of like start doing consumer products. We started doing toys. First thing that happened when we talked to these toy companies was that, hey, you're a games company. You don't know anything about toys. You shouldn't do that. And then they explain how difficult, and it's like rocket science, and you have to do this and that, and it's like really, really difficult. We've been making toys for more than 100 years. You don't understand. But then, you know, like we started looking at that, and uh, we made some toys. We partnered with this company called Commonwealth Toy in New York. And uh, I think last year we sold something like 25, 30 million toys. So, you know, it wasn't that difficult. And, uh, and I think that, uh, you know, of course, we could have, again, you know, like believed these guys who told us that it's like rocket science. You're a games company. You shouldn't do that. And I think that that's, that's one thing that we hear all the time, and, and, uh, and probably you do as well. And I think that, you know, if you believe, you know, just do it. And the worst, can, the worst thing that can happen is that you'll fail. And, you know, like, uh, okay, we're not Asian here, so, uh, or maybe there's a few, but uh, you could lose face. That's another thing that always, you know, like when we do a lot of business in, in China, it's our second largest, fastest growing market. So what I always tell people there, you know, about failure and, and all of that, I mean, we made 51 games before Angry Birds, we're still like alive, we didn't lose face. And also when you talk about losing face, it's not like you physically lose face. It's not like for real. It's not dangerous. You know, so, so uh, you know, that, that's one thing that it's, it's very good. You know, you always, you have to have the courage to try new things. Don't believe all these guys that tell you that you can't do it. I mean, we're building the biggest entertainment franchise on the planet. And a lot of people, you know, like when we say that, okay, we're looking at Disney and we're looking at these companies, and then it's like, guys, you're like a tiny company from a tiny country, you know, like Helsinki, Finland. What, who do you think you are? And, you know, like, sure, but uh, we'll give it a try, and we'll see who's laughing in a few years. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, we don't have a problem with people laughing, you know, at us. Ideally, of course, with us, but, you know, it's, it's okay to laugh at us as, as well. Uh, so I think that that's, that's something that, again, comes back to my first point, that uh, dare to be different. You know, try the new things, do things differently. Again, you know, people, you know, human beings want to you want to fit in, you want to conform, but that's not something you want to do in your marketing. It's all about standing out. So, uh, and and it's, it's very easy again to say, but it's not that easy to do. So you, kind of like you have to have the courage to try new things. And that's kind of like what we've been doing at Rovio every day. 
in building the brand, getting the products out there. If we do things differently, then we're probably doing the right thing. And uh, doing stuff differently always, you know, very often just by doing it differently adds value. So again, really think about how you can do things differently from your competitors. And this, you know, not only in like different products, but you know, like different ways of distributing. Like simple example, when we came out with Angry Birds for Android, we looked at the market. Oh, it seems like people are not paying for content, so we're going to give the game away for free with ads. And at the time, not many people were doing that. But it was definitely kind of like the right decision because we now have hundreds of millions of downloads on Android. And it monetizes amazingly well. We're serving 2 billion ads every month. We're the biggest mobile ad publisher on the planet. And uh, again, we learned a thing or two about advertising. So we're now, now also kind of like an advertising company. And we're running a campaign with McDonald's in China. Right now, we rebranded 1,500 or co-branded, I should say, 1,500 McDonald's restaurants in China, biggest campaign they've ever done. So, you know, it can be done. But I think also, uh, again, comes back to this, that doing things that haven't been done before, you know, it's OK. And another thing, uh, a lot of people, I think most, mo most people here are from Europe, right? So let's have the non-European raise your hands. All four of you, five. <laughs> cool. So, so a lot of, lot of people came up to me today and asked, like, OK, so how many people, you know, like, so I live in San Francisco, right? No, actually, I live in Helsinki. How many people do we have in the Silicon Valley? None. Zero. And it's like, what? And then, like, why would we need to be there? OK, the US is our biggest market. We have three people in Santa Monica. You know, that's where kind of like the Hollywood guys hang out. But, but, you know, this is one example, again, that uh, a lot of people here think that, you know, the way you build a startup is that, okay, yeah, you could start here, but, okay, it's very difficult to find funding in Vienna. The VCs are so clueless, they don't understand, blah, blah, yada, yada. You know, Silicon Valley, so much better. And, and this is, you know, like, uh, why are you doing what everybody else is doing? Do you know how many startups there are in Vienna? I have no idea, but a few. How many are there in Silicon Valley? A lot. So yes, there are more VCs, but there's more comp competition for that money as well. So, so one, one of these things that we didn't move our operation to the Silicon Valley just because you're supposed to do so. I mean, it might make sense, but you know, we didn't need to do it. We have 500 people in Helsinki. It's OK. Fairly successful, insanely profitable. Uh, so you know, it can be done in Europe. And, uh, this is, again, one of these examples that you don't have to do what you're supposed to do. So, you know, you should always question everything. And I, like all the people here who came and, you know, asked me about this, I also like, why? Why are you moving the company to Silicon Valley? Or why do you want to even do that? Have you even been there? So it's, again, like, question everything. You don't have to do what everybody else is doing. You know, sometimes it makes sense, but, you know, I'm pretty sure that you can build uh, pretty interesting and impressive companies here in Vienna as well. I mean, I heard about this guy who like came up with some soft drink or something, and it seems to be everywhere. So you know, it can be done. Or you know, what do I know? But anyway, so so uh, you know, it's just uh, just a thought. So uh, I think that the theme, you know, if if that's like not clear uh, yet, is is really about uh, you know, differentiate, stand out. You know, dare to do things that you're not, you know, supposed to do. You know, so I think that's that's something that's very very important. Um, yeah, I could go on and on and like talk about this. So uh, probably you get a lot more uh, out of this if you ask some questions. So I think uh, one other thing at Rovio that we really believe in is, is uh, dialogue, engaging our fans in the process. We reply to every tweet, every email, every message. Uh, very, very important for us. And there's no excuse not to. Because in this day and age, you know, it's, it's amazing. We can communicate with 
so many people. I mean, through our game, we can reach tens of millions of people every day. They can talk to us. So uh, I think that's another thing that I would say that, uh, you know, be different, but also, you know, listen to your fans, talk to your fans. And, uh, yeah, any questions or comments? <laughs> Too many. You first. Hi. Uh, is Angry Bird going to be your Mickey Mouse and you will move to some uh, little brands? Or it's all about Angry Birds? I mean, right now, uh, right now it's uh, all about Angry Birds, Bad Piggies, and then we have Amazing Alex as well. So, uh, uh, Angry Birds is really like uh, our Coke. But you know, if you look at Coca-Cola company, they have Sprite and Fanta and like a bunch of other products. But Angry Birds clearly is, is uh, kind of like the brand, the franchise that we have used to build the distribution. So uh, right now we're like 99% focused on uh, making Angry Birds as big as it can be, taking it everywhere. So you know, games. Uh, animations or animated series is coming next year. Uh, consumer products, so uh, we, 30 percent of our business last year was like physical products. So again, you know, one example: our competitors in the games industry say that in a few years uh, they think that all of their business will be digital. In a few years, more than half of our business will be physical. So uh, uh, yeah, we're taking Angry Birds. Uh, everywhere and we want to make Angry Birds a permanent part of pop culture, you know, like Mickey Mouse or Hello Kitty or Mario or you name it. So, uh, uh, and I think that also if you look at uh, Mickey Mouse, I mean, great example. Disney started in 1928. They created Steamboat Willie, animated short about this little mouse. And now, a few years later, that mouse is everywhere. So uh, we started creating this little game, and two years later, you know, those birds are everywhere. So in this day and age, we can move a lot faster, and we even have color. Can you throw it back? And if you have a question, please stand up while asking it. Just over there, the, guy, the gentleman raising his hand. Not that one of them. Hey, I actually I forgot what I, you know, Typically, when you like dare ask questions, so it's for you. But okay, yeah, it's <laughs> and there's actually uh, I'll actually bring it to you. So ask. <laughs> there's speak for you. <laughs> yeah. I should have done this all the time. Damn. Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, you, you always kind of like you have to believe, but uh, also uh, if you look at those 51 games, it's not like they were all like you know total failures or anything like that. It was just that the business model at the time, I mean, we had to make games for the big guys, you know, for uh, the EAs, for the Nokia's of the world, because uh, there wasn't distribution available for startups. You know, if you were a tiny little company. You, did, you wouldn't get like the time of day with these guys. You know, they were only interested in talking to the big guys. So we ended up doing work for hire. So we did, uh, you know, the bounce games for Nokia. Those games are on like 200 million plus devices. But, you know, we didn't make a lot of money on that. And we made uh, Need for Speed, Burnout Mobile for EA. And again, you know, work for hire, not much upside. So, uh, you know, we made great games. And I think that the team always took great pride in, in making great games, games that were very well received, but, uh, uh, you know, the business was not, like, amazing. And, and if we wouldn't have been successful with Angry Birds, you know, we wouldn't probably be around as a company. So, so it was kind of like one of these make or break things. Uh, but I think that also, like, uh, you need to have those kind of like near-death experiences that tends to bring out the best in people when you know that you're like about to die, so you better do something. So, so I think that that was really the case with Rovio as well, that had to do something, otherwise, you know, would have died. So, uh, uh, 
so kind of like death motivates you a bit, I would say. But uh, but uh, yeah, I think that it's it's really to motivate people. You have to to make sure that uh, you work on stuff that you love doing. And I, I think that it's 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 a very good uh, kind of like saying that if you love what you do, you don't have to work a single day in your life. So you know, for me, I don't feel like I'm working. <laughs> so it, it's it's again uh, depends on kind of like matter of definition. So if you love what you do, you're pretty motivated. Yeah, yeah sure. All right, Peter, I'm really sorry. We're I have two more toys. Time. Can you can we just <laughs> would it be fair if you just, just randomly throw it in? Yeah, I can probably do that. And then like one over there. Yes. But if you have like uh, more questions, I'm gonna be around for uh, uh, like an hour or two, so I'm more than happy to talk some more. So thanks. Give it up for Peter. Woo.